We're going to be moving on to the floor today, uh, at least part of the floor. We're not going to do the whole floor. Uh, I'm just going to do the floor that will the seat will be supported by. So how I'm going to do that is I have these pieces I just started cutting. I will I will seam them into here. I'll replace I'll replace this bracket. I think that's just a support bracket. It used to go all the way across. Now I have everything else is completely different. So I'm just going to make a little support bracket here. And then this will get about there on the beam. So when I do the, the rest of the floor, it has a good spot to sit on and weld onto and support. So I'm going to start putting these in and I will, I will cut out a piece that'll go to hold the seat bottom. The other thing I wanted to just show, I didn't show the drip rail, but here it is right here, as you can see along here. That's what I ended up making. Now it's not perfect yet. There's still some spots that, that need to be worked, but for the most part, that's kind of the shape I'm after. I might still trim this down a little bit, you know, make this a little bit thinner, but we'll see how that goes when I get there into the bodywork stage. This was just preliminary, just to kind of get it going, get that seam taken care of so there's no seam in there anymore. It's all welded up. And then, of course, everything under here is all taken care of too, as far as the rust and the seam and everything, and the transition, you know, there's a little goofy spot right here yet, you know, so there's a lot of body work that needs to be finished out and then added and stuff. So, but that's good enough for right now until I get into that mode. Meanwhile, I'm going to get into this floor. I'm going to take the sheet metal here and I'm going to try to do some bead rolling on it and weld that in here. And then I'll take the seat bottom support and put it in there. I got to do some repairs on that too. So there we are. So working on part of this floor section here, you can see I've started putting my piece in here and I'm starting to weld it in along here. And then I left this for where the other floor will meet and go across. So that way I have a good base here and that'll go all the way back. You see where my, my bolt is for the mount. Uh, you can see back here, I've got some rot problems. Uh, even though it's all been blasted, I'll be cutting it out here and going across and getting rid of this stuff. <clears throat> and I'll be remaking it. And then I'll be cutting it straight till about this line here and I'll make that line go all the way across. And that's where the floor will go. The floor will go from here and to here, all the way up. Uh, there's a mark here where the seat is. There's two of them. So the floor piece that I'm going to be making is always going to stop right in this area. That's how the bigger it's going to be. Because from here forward is going to be where the transmission hump is going to be and everything. And I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go. And as you can see down in here, this is where the factory one went. It would have gone, it would have gone flat like this and then up that ramp. Not sure if that's where that's going to be exactly. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to seal all back up in there. I'm not worried about the pocky marks on this metal here. This is, most of this is going to get cut off, but uh, there's nothing really wrong with any of this. It's just got the pocky marks from blasting rust removal. Uh, and I'll seal all that and I'll do the repairs on that side. But this is where I'm at so far to give you an idea. So still making progress on the truck. Um, just to show you what I've been doing. I've actually been doing all these repairs along here. All this has been replaced. Same with down there over here. Now there's a support that goes from here, kind of kicks out, kind of triangular. It's got to come in yet. 
So I'll be doing that, but I've got to do a little bit of repair on this piece and down in this here pocket. This is all got to get um, metal put in it yet. Uh, all this stuff has all been welded in. This is the original piece. I, that's fine. This seam right here will get seam sealed because it's the back of the body. Um, otherwise, all this has been welded and tacked and everything. And what I'm also doing, <clears throat> like I said, there's a triangular piece that goes here too. And then there's a strip that goes all the way across to each side. That's actually the back of the seat support. Back of the seat support starts right here and comes up. And you can see where the, the mark was here. This is the original floor. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't fit because I'm changing everything. I'm making a new one of these and we'll see how that turns out. Not sure if I'm going to go quite as far up as this. I believe my transmission tunnel is going to come down into this a little bit. So I might shorten this up a couple inches um, <clears throat> just for my floor that's going in there. Um, I want to try to recreate that. We'll see what happens there. Um, so this is where I'm at. It's coming along. These are in. As you can see, and I gotta do some more seam sealing and a little bit of uh, filler right through here and stuff. You'll never really see any of this, but I'm still gonna kind of smooth it out a little bit. Um, just in case you pull the carpet back, you can kind of see what's been done. So that's where we're at. Continuing on uh, with the floor. Now, I still have I still have some work to do through here and here, and I still got the support that's got to go from here down. It's kind of like triangulated. But I wanted to start getting on this floor. This is going to be the floor. And here's why I cut the piece like this. So now I have plenty of room to set this floor on, and I got plenty of room to make mistakes. So right now I got to cut right to it on both sides. And I'm going to cut a or roll a pattern in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crawl up underneath it, and I'm going to mark off where these the edge of the frame is all the way around, so I know where my pattern has to stay within. And the pattern I think I've mentioned before, I'm going to try to replicate the original floor. And We'll see how that turns out. Don't know if I can get it quite exactly like that. Let's go. Okay, I marked the floor underneath and then I did a layout over here. And here's the layout. You can see here's where my frame is. I actually traced, this is the top. I actually traced it underneath, remarked it. So that gives me an idea where my actual framing is. This will be the pattern that I do, which is the same as that pattern there. Actually, it's a little different. I shortened these up just a little bit because I didn't want to get too close to the frame area. I want to be able to still be able to wipe in there and wax, stuff like that. So here it is now. Hopefully I'll be able to bead roll that. Continuing on the floor, as you can see, I've got the floor in there. I ended up uh, bead rolling the area here all the way around. Uh, in order to do that, um, uh, I used the English wheel. I traced, I traced it all out and I showed that, but then I took an English wheel on that area to try to flatten that area out and it kind of pushes a curve into it so when you put the bead in it's pre it's like pre-stretching so then you can roll this and now you're stretching it back a different direction so it kind of flattens out the 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 floor but you know uh, it, it's never perfect so there was warpage in this thing so you can see some heat marks here that I've been doing and then I also had to heat this up because I had to pound this through 
because we could, could only get the bead to go so far because the bottom die would hit this bead. So I had to continue that with heating it and then I pounded that in to, to form it like that. Uh, and then so, like I said, the floor was kind of warped and you can see the still kind of a little warped here and here, which I'll take care of. I'm kind of working this out. So I started over here, as you can see, there's some screw heads. I put one screw head in, kind of fit the floor right. Then I started clamping, clamping, and getting that straight there. I clamped this down here to keep this from bowing. This wants to bow down, so I'm keeping it from doing that by fastening it like this. Now I'm onto this side. And as you can see, I'm putting the screws in here too. I had to heat this up a little bit more because it wanted to really kind of buckle. So I had to relieve that pressure with heat. Kind of relieved it and kind of let it push back down into space, you know, into this area. I will do that. And then this piece here is all, this is going to be attached to the, the um, pedestal for the seat. So I will drill that into here too, and that'll keep this kind of more straight. And then same with this one, this is gonna be part of the pedestal too, and that's gonna come in right over here. Um, <clears throat> I won't drill that one until I get the pedestal set up, but, and then I can work along here, because there's just a little waves here and there on this, there's two of them actually, but I think with a little relief or a little heat, and uh, I can get those to suck down too. So that's, that's where I'm at so far. And I'm continuing on the floor. Um, I now have it welded. I had to do a lot of heat shrinking here. The, the material was wavy through here. Now the floor is not exactly perfect, but when I put the, the seat bottom on there, it'll It'll, it'll go from here to here, and that's got channel on it that'll help draw that floor exact, a lot more flat. See, it's just a little rip, a little wave right through here. Um, and I'll also be able to do some more ha hammer and dolly work. But these were my bad spots right through here. This was um, humped way up like this on both sides. Now I just knock that down, and it's got a little ripples in it, but it's pretty good. Uh, again, I can continue working on that later. So that is the floor bottom. And the seat bottom or seat riser will go on that floor. And as you can see, <clears throat> I put uh, angle iron. I trimmed the rot off of here. And I just cut it off and I add an angle iron here. I did the same to the front. See, I fixed it on. You can see it here. And then I added this material here around the side, right there, to make it a full flange. And then that'll all get welded down to the floor. That'll be my next step. And here is what I'm going to call the finished product. Um, I still got to finish up some welds grind them, seal it all. I still got to do that, but I'm not going to continue that on this video. This is going to be the end of it. Um, but you can see the, I replicated the original um, bead, which was normally stamped, but this is a bead roll. The difference is that the factory would have been up this way. I went down because I want that down on the bottom side. It'll look better. Uh, and if Anytime the seat base will go by, you know, I don't have to worry about notching anything. So anyway, that's it. I kind of just stitched it in. Uh, again, I'm going to weld everything up. And that's including back here, here, all this, down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weld all that up and then I'm going to grind it. And then I'm going to, uh, I might skim it in a few spots to smooth things out. And then I'm going to seal it up. But that's basically the floor, and that's as far as I'm going to go with the video. Um, next video I do, I might just kind of run around just to show you how much further that is. But 
I expect that the none of this will ever be seen because of this will be carpeted. Uh, the carpet's probably going to come right up to this lip uh, here. And that's it. Other than pulling a few more things out of this cab, um, this cab is almost done as far as I'm going to go metal work wise. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe, like, all that happy stuff.